Hey, I'm Noah from the Disruptive Media Learning Lab at Coventry University, and today we're talking about badges, but specifically learning pathways, which is a feature of Badger, our digital badging platform, that's really useful for educators because it allows you to link different badges together and create a whole learning journey that a student can go through from start to finish. So it's a really nice way of using your badges, but also badges that other people in our organization and outside of our organization make um, to create a unique experience for your learners. So to get started, we're going to go to the badges website. So if you haven't been there, it's badges.coventry.domains. And this is just gonna be where you learn more about badges generally. So how you can earn a badge as a student, uh, how you might wanna issue a badge, all sorts of stuff, who's using badges. So this site's well worth a read, but you probably found it already. Um, but if you're on this website, you're gonna come up to view all badges. And this is gonna take you to Coventry University's Badger page. And this shows you all of the issuers and all of the badges that are inside our organization at the moment. So they're grouped by issuer. So Connect2 is a project that issues badges. There's Student Digital Fluency as an issuer and, and lots of other ones. So to get started, what we wanna to do today just as a demo is I'm going to make a learning pathway for our digital leaders program. Now this is part of the student uh, digital fluency issuer within the university. And what I wanna do is take some of the badges that we give out for achieving certain aspects of digital fluency and take a student through a journey from start to finish and use the pathways feature to really illustrate that. So I'm gonna come down to issuers and if you're uh, an issuer already, uh, you should have access to a space like this. If you're not yet an issuer, you're not sure how to become one, check out our other video on badges and issuers. And if you're interested in starting badging, um, then fill out the contact form uh, on this on this website, badges.coventry.domains, and we can set you up with an account. So, but once you're an issuer, then you should be able to come in and see this sort of platform that shows you your pathways, your groups, which we'll get into in a little bit, and all the digital badges that you already offer. Now we offer these three, but what I wanna do is link them together into a learning pathway. So I'll come over to pathways and I'm gonna create a new one. Now what this is gonna do is gonna give the student the digital leader certification to say that they've done all the training that they need to do to have this new certification, which is, is one of our badges but we want the pathway to lead to the badge. So we're gonna call this um, the digital leader certification. You should put a description in here because the pathway is public and the student will be able to share it with employers and collaborators in the future so somebody can see what they did to earn all these things and what their journey has been. Uh, so I'll click create pathway. So that's it, this is it. The pathway is the digital leader certification so far. Uh, nobody's doing it and there's nothing on it. So let's edit the pathway to make something happen. So pathways always starts with the end. It, it starts with the end that the person is working to. In this case, it's the digital leader certification, which is our, our biggest badge. So to start with that one, I'm gonna select a milestone badge for this step. And that milestone badge is our digital leader certification. Um, that is a four star badge. They have to work hard to get to it. And that's what they're gonna end up with, but they need to get to it somehow. So the way they do that is by adding these children's steps that eventually take them to the beginning of where they start this pathway. So I'm going to add a step. Now for our students to get the digital leader certification, they have to deliver a digital skills booster session to their peers. Um, so I'm gonna call that the uh, skills booster session or the skills booster session delivery. That's a step that they're going to have to achieve. Um, so once they've done that, then they're sort of qualified for the digital leader certification. Um, but in order to do the digital skills booster session delivery, they're gonna have to do some training and get our digital fluency badge. So I'm gonna add another child step to this skills booster delivery. So if I come over here, I'm gonna make that step the uh, digital fluency badge awarded. Save those changes. And what I can do for this digital fluency step is award them a milestone badge when they, when they achieve their digital fluency, uh, which is our digital fluency badge. So it's a kind of lower rated badge that they can work to by doing a few training sessions. So how do they get the digital fluency badge? 
they go through some training. Now you could, uh, every badge in Badger, if I just click on it, has some badge details. So I could click on that and you can look through and see what the criteria are for earning a badge. That's sort of the whole point of the open badge system is, is it's publicly available. That people can understand what a person did to earn the badge. But if you want to also put this into a pathway to make it a little bit clear for people to understand the steps they need to tick off, we can do that too. And that's what I'm gonna do, just to make it a little bit more obvious what do you need to do to get this badge. So <laughs> to get the Digital Fluency badge, um, you're gonna to need to come to our training session. So I'll add a child step here. And the first one is going to be our training session number one, which is on building an account with Coventry Domains. But there's a few, and I'll save that. Um, obviously you can add more descriptions as you go along. This is just a demo, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna move quickly. Um, but before, well, after you do that, you'll need to do more training. It's not a child step, it's, it's sort of a sibling step. You need to do all these things in order to get this next step. So I'm gonna click add step down here to create a sibling step. And this is gonna be our training session two on Wikimedia. I'll save those changes. And we need another sibling down here, which is our training session three on digital fluency. And we're gonna do one more, which is our training session four on online collaboration. I'll save those changes. Now, what I can also do is say, in order to do session number four, we really needed to do the training session number three. So I can add a sort of prerequisite step. It's not a badge, it just says you need to do something else in order to come to this part here. Um, so I can choose session number three. Again, we're working backwards uh, as we build our pathway. And same thing with session number three, I can say really the student needs to complete session number two first. And you guessed it for session number two, they're gonna need to complete session number one. So that kind of makes it a little bit more clear that if you wanna get this digital fluency badge, you're gonna to have to do these training sessions uh, in that order. And if I just click on the digital fluency badge again, um, it automatically put in as prerequisites that they need to do sessions one, two, three, and four. They've all come up there as those prerequisite things. Now, in order to start your first training session, you'll need to do one other thing, which is to take an IT skills test. So I'll come up to our training session number one, and I'm going to add a step to that one. Now, this is actually the start of the process. We're gonna see um, IT skills training. So I'll just save those changes. And for IT skills training, what you do is you take an online test and you're awarded a badge if you pass it. So I can say, in order to tick this box of IT skills training, you'll need a required badge, which is our very first badge, um, IT skills equipped. So now the student has a journey and it starts from this IT skills badge, but then they can come to our training sessions. They have to complete all of them. Then they get the digital fluency badge automatically once they've done these steps. Um, then they just need to deliver a session to their peers. And then finally, once they do all those things, they've got the digital leader badge. So you can see the pathway has taken somebody through our badges that we've created here in the digital fluency issuer project and taken them to the end goal, the digital leader certification. Now, that's all pretty cool. But we have a few extra things that we can do. So I don't just wanna leave it there. Um, I wanna show you a few extra features so you can make your pathways a little bit more rich and some things you can do to give your learners some variety in how they approach the path. Um, so we'll get back into it. What I can do here uh, for the digital session delivery, well, I might say that I don't just want them to deliver a session. I actually want them to be very good at leading others and I might want them to be good at mentoring. So under this step, just before they're awarded the badge, after they've done their training, I think maybe they should do something else as well as delivering a session. So here I can add a step here, and I might say that they need to complete some kind of mentoring training. So that's going to be the step there. They need to complete mentoring training, and to do that, they'll need to go out into the world, and they'll need to earn some other badges around mentoring. So I can add a required badge for this step. Now, we don't have any badges on mentoring in the Digital Fluency Project but our organization does. So on this tab, instead of issuer, if I come over to organization, this is everybody in Coventry, all kinds of different badges on offer here. And if I just look, uh, look up the word mentor, I can see that there's two. So Vigo offer one with the peer mentoring program. So I'll have that one. You can complete that one and that would count. But I also wanna say there's this connect to mentoring thing, which is with Fab Lab, so a project in the city that we're linked to. And we think, yeah, if you do mentoring with Fab Lab, that would count. So I can pick that one as well. Now, at the moment, the, children, the students were gonna need both of these badges, so I'm just gonna swap that so they just need one. So under required badges, instead of all two out of two, all of two badges, I'm just gonna say one. So they can complete one of those two, and that's it, that's their mentoring ticked off, everything's great. Um, so <laughs> our pathway looks like this. They start with the skills test, do our training sessions, they've got the digital fluency badge automatically, um, they do a session delivery and complete some mentoring training, 
and then boom, they're digital leaders. Uh, one other thing I want to show you is like, say there's another step you want to do, but nobody in the university is offering a badge related to that step yet. Or you want to give your students even more choice. What I could do for this mentoring thing is I don't just have to stick to things that are made in the university. So I can add another required badge as an option. And instead of our organization, I could just click third party. Now this is going to go and search the world of badges. <laughs> this is every open badge there is in the world. And if a student is able to, maybe online, or maybe it's a local organization, if a student's able to earn that badge, you can use that in your pathway, um, which is a really great way to kind of build bridges to the community a little bit. So if I click on, say, I want them to become an IBM mentor, um, it just gives you a little warning. This isn't a trusted organization, it's somebody else. And your, uh, your group members will need to grant permissions to those issuers. We'll look at groups in, in just a second. I'll click continue and I'm still keeping this ticked to one out of these three badges as needed. Uh, so now students have a choice. They need to start with the training, do a few sessions, do their skills delivery, and then do some mentoring training with us, with Connect2 that we're linked to, or with somebody out in the world that we've approved their badge. We think it's sufficient and we can incorporate it into our pathway. So you can see how this becomes really powerful because if you're in one faculty, um, maybe uh, arts and humanities, and you want to reach out and maybe incorporate some of the training that they're doing over at environment, engineering, and computing, you can do that and you can bring it into your pathway and work together. And similarly, if you think um, maybe there's some really great volunteering opportunities going on in the city and they're offering badges, so if City of Culture are offering badges for volunteering, you might think, actually, that would be great in my pathway. So I'll say, you can go and do that, everybody, and that will count in the pathway here. Um, so that's our pathway complete. Uh, it looks pretty good and we're pretty much ready to publish that one and, and make it public. Now, the other thing you can do, or that you have to do, is you have to create a group of learners that is sort of subscribed to your pathway. So this might be your course, your module. Um, for the Digital Leaders Project, we have a group of digital leaders who are gonna go through this pathway. So I need to quickly create that group uh, and assign them this pathway. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we're done with this. We think this is a great pathway. I'm just gonna go ahead and let's see, time's that pathway. Yep, that one's looking pretty good. Um, we don't have any groups created around this pathway yet, so we're going to need that in a second. Let me just make sure that this pathway is published. It's sort of a draft at the moment, so I'll click publish and publish now so people will actually be able to complete the pathway as soon as they're eligible. Um, so that's great. Now I'll come back to my issuer account and here next to pathways, I also have groups. Now I wanna create that group of digital leaders so that they're able to complete my pathway. So if I click create group, what you can do is give it a name. So this is gonna be my digital leaders 2021 cohort. Again, you can give it a description so people know what's going on. And here you can invite people to this group one at a time uh, and they'll be able to open a Badger account. Or if you have a, a CSV of everyone in your course or your module that you want to complete a pathway, you can insert the CSV and that will import everybody to your group. So for this one, I'll put myself in. I'll be, a, I'll be the first digital leader for this project. <laughs> I'll put in my email address. Uh, there we go. And that person will be invited to this pathway. So I've got, I've got a bit of a group now. So everybody on this one will be part of the same group. Now on this tab here next to group members, you also have subscribe pathways. So here is where we can add that pathway that we made earlier, which was our digital leader certification pathway. So everybody who is in my group can be subscribed to this pathway. This works if you use LinkedIn Learning, which is again available with your um, being a part of our institution. You can sign up to a learning pathway where LinkedIn will like gather all the courses and tell you which order to do them in. And you can be subscribed to multiple pathways. In the same way, um, a group can be subscribed to more than one pathway. So we could say that I want my digital leaders to do our certification, but I might also want my digital leaders to do the Vigo mentoring pathway and they can have to, they could do both. You can also have many groups subscribe to your pathway. So it's a public pathway. You can let your colleagues know about it and they might have a group and they'll think your pathway is great. Go and do that pathway. And so you can have multiple people coming to complete your pathway. And that is pretty much all you need to know about Badger and Pathways. It's a great way to work with other people in the university, to work with people in the community, and to bridge together the badges that you're awarding so that students have a more uh, well-rounded and exciting learning experience. So if you have any other questions or you want to get started with Badger and Pathways, then do get in touch. Use the contact form on the Badger's website. That's badgers.coventry.domain. And we'd, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So good luck. Have fun with it.